what does it mean to qualify for the E Club World Cup? It means a lot, it's a massive part of the season, um, the biggest 2v2 event, uh, so it's great to be there and um, compete against the best in the world. Take two. Take two, by the way. Yeah. I'm Ethan, I'm a pro for repair for Team Footwiz. Making equal World Cups one of the biggest events of the year, so to do that, it means a lot to me because it's also one of the events which I feel like I'm one of the best at. Me and Nick Seb are one of the better 2v2 teams, I'd say, in the world, so it's almost like a relief to make an event like this because it's about making it and just letting us be ourselves and actually doing well at the event. So I'm relieved and very happy to make this event. How do you feel your 2v2 season has gone so far this year? Um, I think overall it's been very good. We start the season off um, competing in Masters, which is a massive 2v2 event. Um, we got to the semi-finals, so we got for our group, which is top two out of top five. Then we won the quarter-finals, and we matched uh, Ninjas and Pajamas in the semi-finals, and we unfortunately lost on pens. That game was for a final at Masters and a spot in the Club World Cup, so it was a bit heartbreaking losing that on penalties, like being that close. But it just meant we had to kick on for Club World Cup. Um, going into Club World Cup, we're very confident. What were your thoughts when you found out you were going to be teaming with Nick Snip? Um, when I joined Forwards two years ago, I found out he was teaming with Nick Snip. But it was uh, definitely something different because I think he was a really good UK player. He was up and coming, so people really hadn't heard of him just yet. Like, it's almost like he took a risk with me and I took a risk with him. And uh, at the time, I was actually quite happy because it was something different in my career. And I finally found a team I wanted to be a part of. So being a part with that with Nick Seb, who's looking for him, went really well as a 2 2 duo. So yeah, could be better. And at the time, I was actually quite happy. So Team of Ethan came up when, at the start of the year, we were looking to get a 2v2 teammate for myself. Um, obviously being at football the year before and me and Dan went through a few pro players and we had a bit of a uh, discussion and we thought Ethan was the best the best teammate that I could get and um, it's gone positively so far. Obviously going to Club World Cup, we're very confident, we're very good at the moment. I think a lot of other 2v2 teams around the, the, the world playing FIFA respect us a lot. Um, we have very high skill, um, just hopefully it pays off at Club World Cup at the end of the year. My name is Dedman and I am the eSports manager at Team Footwiz. Right, so that's 24 teams for the Club World Cup this year, 24 of the best teams round the world, all different continents, all different nations, and it's four groups of six with the top four going through from each group. Now it's a best of one format, no best of twos until the knockouts, but I'll get there. So the best of one format, you'll play each team twice across a space of two days. Day one, you'll play everybody in your group once. 90 minute match, no extra time, three points up for grab, you can get one point, or go with zero points, but we don't want zero points. We don't speak about that round here. The top four teams, as I say, go through to the next day into the knockouts round of 16, where you then play a best of two formats against one of the other best teams who have went through the group. If we finish first, we'll play against fourth in group C. And if we finish second, we'll play third. It's as simple as that. This has been going good as well. The boys have been smashing through teams. Oh, don't get me wrong, you get the odd time where you walk over and they're both just slumped in their chair. But look, that happens, it's practice. That's what practice is for. Practice isn't just to win games, it's to get the reps in, try different attacking patterns, get used to certain defensive plays and stuff like that. And that's exactly what they've been doing. But yeah, it's been great. It's been brilliant. The, the local people are lovely. It's a bit of um, a different culture to what we used to over in the West, over in the UK and stuff. But I'm embracing it, I'm enjoying it and uh, looking forward to the rest of the tournament when it starts.
their predictions for their group. I'm just gonna say four. Them, Raptors, Hollywood, and Fnatic. So four. Come back to this. Come back to this one, alright? It's a guess. Yeah! <laughs> I have gifts. Santa. Gifts from the game of eight for the boys. Can't get away there. <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. I think you boys should do your walk out in the snood and your glasses. You echo. Yeah. Not a chance. Like Where's Snap? Probably lying in bed, mate. He uh, doesn't get started till literally when the tournament starts. Not ready for these early starts. Well, question for you. Mm -hmm. How many points would you be happy at the end of the day with? Like five best of ones on the first day. Yeah. I'd want nine. Hey, that's what I said in the car on the way. We'd be happy with nine. There you have it from the horse's mouth. Bash! <laughs> We also nearly died on the way here. How happened? Oh my god, we actually did die to be So we're driving, yeah? You know how they drive out here? They drive crazy. They're just like, vroom, 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 vroom. But like, Max, what's happened? Like, 2019, it's nuts. And like, we're driving down the motorway, yeah? I look forward. The guy goes, like, he's tailgating this massive lorry. I'm thinking, right, blow's going to end up in the back of me, and none of us are going to make it to the venue. So, I'm scared. G, so turn around, GC, cameraman. I just see, put his belt on. <laughs> it's alarming he didn't have it on already, by the way. And they're literally driving, there's a massive tyre in the middle of the road, he's driving towards it. I start pulling towards it, I'm like, boss, 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 look. Because I think if we land in this tyre, we're going to flip upside down and do like Roly Poly or something. And literally, the bloke just looked at me and went, hmm. just drove around it a little bit. Never felt so pathetic in my life. But we're alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good morning. Good morning, mate. How we doing? Good, good. Good night of sleep? Probably my worst one yet, but not. Still good. <laughs> Perfect. Brilliant start today. Perfect. Nah, but I went to bed like two, a couple, like an hour ago. Yeah? So, still and good. I want to ask you a question, which I asked Ethan. Yeah. How many points would you be happy with today? Eight. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, what do you say? How many directly you said? Eight. No, he said nine. We take it. Sorry. Right. We take it. Why are we getting notifications? Who is it? How do you get eight points? Two wins, two draws, one loss. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good maths, that. Who do you think the team would you lose to? <laughs> <laughs> Probably Fnatic. Yeah. You don't think YMCA a nice little cross to pair check? Bosh! <laughs> yeah, he flicks back across to make him a savage. Then back across to Manuel Neuer. Then one more. As eager could see us make a charge. Oh, I'll be very surprised if I've got a smile on my face after that game. <laughs> well, so you reckon it should be a game where you're just going to be defending crosses? Yeah. yeah. Disgusting.
Our first three games of the tournament were really well in group stages. We started off the day playing versus Hollywood, who before the tournament started, we knew we were going to be good because we know one of their players really well and they, I think he qualified for all three World Cups. Um, so we were expecting quite a lot from them. Uh, we went in, we played, we blew them out of the park to almost first half. I think we scored like three goals first half. We started fire. Um, I think we won the game 4-2 in the end. We were very confident going into the second game, which was the Finland boys, I think they're called YMCA, which again, we picked up another three points to make us two out of two. That game was a bit of a weird one, but we knew they were going to be a bit of a weird one. They had a lot of crosses in their locker, a lot of uh, stuff we don't really like defending, and no one likes defending. But we got the three points again, which put us on six points, start day the best we could. So the first three games, couldn't have asked for more, nine out of nine. And as we say, we wanted eight or nine points to start of the day. So to have that in the first three games was perfect. My name's Dan, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Futwiz and Team Futwiz Esports. What were your expectations for Team Futwiz in this year's Cup World Cup? I think to better their position at the uh, EA Sports Cup earlier this year where they made top four, losing narrowly to the eventual winners, uh, NIP, Hullet on penalties. I think to beat that placement would be, I think, would be a success. But obviously we're here to win, the boys want to win and they want to get some silverware. So. Uh, that's the overall goal, but we'll just take one game at a time and see how far we can get. I'd say I've been happy at times. I think as a collective, I think both the boys want more. I want more. When I first come into the role, obviously I came in with the intentions of obviously glory, success, winning things, but at the same time understanding that it's a long process, a long journey. Um, one of my main reasons and one of my main goals is really just to push the boys up and make them bigger in the UK scene. They're massive already, but at the same time, kind of close the gap to the boys at the top of all around Europe and hopefully bring home a trophy, which we did actually at the beginning of the season. Did we expect it to come this early? No. Did it happen? Yes. Ethan won FGS1, the first ever FGS with all Europeans all playing on the same console. So that was a massive success for us and kind of set the tone for the rest of the season um, with Masters as well, a top four finish, E-Prem top four finish. Uh, Nick's then making the latest engines of ECO and look, the list goes on. But like I say, that we wanted to see more trophies, more success, and we're slowly, slowly getting there. And I generally believe by the end of maybe next year, we'll be a team who'll be winning trophies consistently. And I'm really looking forward to it. But we will start this weekend, hopefully with a Club World Cup trophy to our name. How does it feel to have your team at the Club World Cup? Immensely proud. Uh, I think out of all the competitions, it's one of our favourites. The way it's presented, produced, 2v2. Like, we really like building really strong duos, as we have done throughout our history. And getting Ethan and Jacob there has been particularly important because we know that they're one of the best in the world. So giving them the opportunity to show it on the biggest stages um, has definitely been a priority for us. The job's going to be hard. Sitting there, like, losing, like, three games back to back. It's just 
just about how you bounce back now. Like, you can't just sit here like, oh, worrying, like, oh, shit, we've lost, like, we're doing awful, blah, blah, blah. Like, you just have to put it behind you. It's the fucking best one at the end of the day. Like, you both know your ability. Like, look at each other. Like, you know who your fucking teammate is. You're not sat here with some stupid idiot next to you who don't know how to play FIFA. Like, just play like it. Play like he's not to play confidence. Just go out and fucking smash him. Just to, to lose two vital points. Obviously, we didn't get the result in the end. We drew 1-1 with a 90th minute equaliser, which stung a lot. But we played well. It was just really unfortunate not to get the three points and obviously know that we're through the group. And yeah, you never wanted to be in that situation where you could get grouped. Am I right in thinking if they win, you avoid defeat and let it go out? I genuinely have no idea. No one knows. We don't know what's going on.
a bit annoying best of one as if you concede a bad goal or you get a bit unlucky you can have a zero points but in the best of two you can kind of make it back so say, say we lose one nil to a, a slightly poorer team in the group we can make it back in the second leg but there is no second leg um, in a best of one in the group so you just go again next game which is a bit frustrating but playing eight games I think or no ten games as there's six teams in the group playing 10 games, we should get enough points to go through and then knock out some better two, which is perfectly fine. Loser bracket is a bit annoying not to have, but we'll do our best. Excitement, entertaining football, that is what I'll say from the rib. I know the boys are playing a 4-4-2, so they're just looking to get in your faces. No five back, no sitting back on the edge of the box. Look, if we lose, we're going to lose 4-3 or 5-3 kind of thing. If we win, we're going to probably win 6-0, 6-4, something like that. So it's going to be entertaining football. It's going to be fun for the viewers to watch. And more importantly, hopefully some controlled performances and some clean sheets. Fingers crossed. Nick Sneb and Ethan. The time is now for these guys. It really is. I feel like they need to step up. They are playing the best FIFA of their careers, Alex. They are indeed right now. And, and for Ethan and Nick Stem, we know day one, they came off a little bit ever so slightly as we got close to the end of that day. Day two, though, they managed to scrape through. They look good near the end of the tournament. And obviously, as Richard will tell us once we get into that game, a lot of backstory with Ethan and Resende. I'm looking forward to the action. Communicate, agree with the things you do. Stick with each other as well, all right? Because it's not going to be easy. It won't be easy. Yeah. Round 16 is officially here at the FIFA E Club World Cup. Remember, the prize money jumps up. This is the biggest ever FIFA E Club World Cup. It's been for one million dollar prize board this one. I'll bring Richard back into the conversation because he did want to tee up the storyline here, Rich. There's a lot of history, not just between the two teams, but between the players in the teams. Yeah, so in FIFA 20, the Club World Cup, Ethan and Resende was a team for 11s. Who did they knock out in the first knockout match? Team footballers, Jamie and Marco. Yeah, well you said they might edge it. It's nice to take the lead in this game. Not the best to start for the UK boys. Ajax and Footways. It's not a great day to be a Footways fan, Brandon. And it was a nervy ending to group stage yesterday. They won't want to see this one again. It's just not good to look at, is it, on the replay, Alex? No, that cross coming in, Van Dijk, it looked like he had it under control. You just sometimes have to go, all right? Backs up against the wall, I can't go back to the goalkeeper, I can't pass it out. Let's just go long and get it gone. Yesterday they were 2-0 down, they pulled it back and got that 3-2 win. There's one thing we know about Nick Sneb and Ethan, they want to go forward, they want to play with that attack. They don't want to sit deep, they don't want to put all their numbers behind the ball. They say, give us a chance to go forward, we want to drive, we want to get into that area. Nick Sneb, one of the best mechanical players here at this tournament. So there's no surprise at times, they do start off a little bit slow, but once they get going, we know they have goals in the front. Well, they're a special team, aren't they, a team for wins crucial was it for them to, to get a goal back in this game they could get a second that's fantastic timing as we join it now it's normally the commentators comes the other way but for footwits it's an all-important I think overall he's actually defended really good 
This is when the fallback works, when you two are playing like this. Defending quality, defending confidently and taking the time as well when you build up. And the comeback kings again, foot was. Absolutely, I think when we saw them down at 2 0, it's a very dangerous scoreline, isn't it? Because you can see it again, your head's in your hands, and you're thinking, oh God, we've, we've completely messed up this knockout stages. But they paused the game, a little chat, got themselves together, back in the game, and now, what, it's a, it's a best of one pretty much, 2 2. Back into the action we go. Let's kick things off then with Ajax taking on Footwears. Yeah, back on the way here for the second leg, me and Alex B will be guiding you through Ajax Team Footwiz whilst keeping a close eye on FC Basel against Ducks America. I think the key thing of this game, Alex, is Footwiz, not again. We're not going 2-0 down again 25 minutes into this one. The team has been able to create a few. Here's one now, Ajax with hard eyes. It's the back of the net. Oh! <laughs> Give credit there to Footways with Mbappe finding that header. Headers are manual, which means you have to be so accurate with where you're aiming. Footways do exactly that. However, though, Ajax, they had a chance at the other end. With this game, we are minutes away from extra time. Keep in mind, whoever wins this is in the quarterfinals. Last attack falls the way of the UK esports organisation team foot was Ethan and Nixdev. What have you got up your sleeve in these sort of areas? Ajax with the ball back nicely or not? There's two hands on the ball. Will take us, I'm pretty sure, into extra time. Like right, literally game time. But everything you're doing is perfect. Just keep it up. You play the way you did this game, you'll win, no doubt. But you have to be conscious of how good they can be as well. Yeah. Because they've not performed to their best. You've stopped them performing to their best. And the fact they paused it when they went 2-2, you know that they're, they're just getting a little shaky in that as well. Just saw, Alex, about two or three minutes of the players' POV. It's just a very different side of the story. Ajax, they looked excited for extra time. They looked ready for extra time. You've got to remember, this is the team that lived in extra time in the e Nations Cup final last year in Copenhagen. So at these moments in extra time, the players, the nerves really start to kick in. You make one mistake, you might not have enough time to find your way back into that game. Can they defend this attack, though, from Footwiz? Here's Omri. And in time, just one minute in extra time. So much noise going on around us. We'll get to the other game as soon as we can. Kamavinga finds De Jong now, building up nicely. Kamavinga whips it into the box where it will be defended well. And the referee should take us into extra time as we jump ships over to that other matchup. You're playing brilliantly. The chance is going to come. It's about who takes it. You need to make sure it's you, boys, all right? Be careful with Vinny, because he's weak as fucking piss. He's weak as piss. Back on the way, Ajax against Footwiz. 15 minutes left to be played in, but being brutally honest, in that 15 minutes, that first section of extra time, we didn't really see any real chances be created. No chances whatsoever for either team. Ajax at half time, there's a lot of tactical changes. Nick the Hammer behind them, the coach just wanting to put his input across, finding any sort of slight bit of angle they might be able to create a chance or two. Footwiz, on the other hand, though, Emma's behind them, he's, he's running up, he's saying, come on, we can do this. Footwiz, what have you got? Have you got ice in your veins? No, unfortunately, it's a horrible high through ball. Penalties here. Let's go through it then. Now, power and nerves. I actually step up first. Paul Popper, over it now. Will it be one goal to the good for Ajax? Yes, it will. First penalty down the middle. Over to Portways. Pogba with the longest run-up in the game. He 
Go left, does he go right or middle? Steps up, saved! Ajax one to the good. Advantage for Ajax, it could be two from two. Kylian Mbappe always reliable, not this time. Bruno Fernandes, Ethan nicks them. Saved again, the same way, Brandon. Pops them to Ajax. They do score. Please, Mbappe with fun wins. Finally, they do find the back of the net, but they still do trail in the shootout. Saved again from Ajax. Fulwitz have scored again. This is it really. Round five of pens. Ajax to step up. They do score. Fulwitz have to score. If Ajax save, they're into the quarter of finals. Up step Van Dijk, Penenka down the middle. Ajax in sudden death, they score, Fulwiz is back on your hands again. Fulwiz must score, or Ajax are through to the top eight. Ajax do not save that one, and we go again in sudden death. Ajax miss! Fulwiz, you score, and you're on your way. No, they miss as well! Ajax stick it in! Up steps De Jong! On the other side of the screen! The way of gaming! They've just done it! I don't know what's going on. They've got to keep up! Up steps Fulwiz, why are you putting him down the middle? What a moment now this is! We've gone back again to sudden death! Ajax miss! What is happening? Fulwiz! Klosterman misses as well! Then with Van der Sarles on the pens! He scores for Ajax! Van der Sar steps up on the other side of things! Will score also! 6-6! Six, six. This is unbelievable! Absolutely unbelievable! We've gone round again! Pogba! Stepping up from the spot, save! Back on Fulwiz's hands! Paul Pogba, we've gone round again! All the way round again, Paul Pogba! With the worst run up of all for Team Fulwiz! Won't miss! This is incredible! Mbappe, now it's your turn for Ajax! Does score! Advantage, Ajax! Bruno Fernandes, always so reliable, needs to be now! Who's going to win it? <laughs> this is, I've never seen scenes like this. Harry Benzema from the spot. Score! Look at Resende. He can't even watch. Mbappe needs to score this one for full easy wheel. This must be the longest penalty shootout you'll ever see. Samueletto. Well, is that it? Miss. Omri. With full wins. on Footwiz there. We haven't heard from them yet. Massive moment in their careers, Alex. A massive moment in their careers. And I think it actually also shows the mental strength of Nick Snebb and Ethan. They came from behind both times in that game. To go all the way to penalties, to go round all the way through as well. That puts a big statement to everyone else out there. Nick Snebb and Ethan, if they go one or two down, it doesn't matter. They're going to keep fighting back. 
and obviously you're gonna play the winner of Team McZee versus Atlantide Wave. Could be a nice little sort of English derby with obviously Stingray on the Atlantide Wave team if they were to win that one. Would that be a nice matchup for you? Yeah, it'd be a good matchup because you know Atlantide and Team McZee are a good team, but I'm happy to play whoever, but no, it would be nice to play Stingray. How much is that emotionally, mentally taken out of you playing that game and that, and that length of penalty shootout? I'll be honest, that's like, I don't get nervous from playing free for anymore, but that, that was a new experience for me. I've never gone that far like a penalty shootout in my life. Hopefully never again, but no, honestly, I'm, I'm done. I need my break. It's Buttwiz versus Atlantide. Big, big game. This game's worth an extra $35,000, let's not forget. 75,000 minimum going to the winner of this match. Back to our casters to cover this one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. This is time. Let's talk about this because this is this is a big one. This okay. is a, obviously a big English affair from our point of view. Footwiz obviously coming into this one, big performance. You know, Footwiz a, a, a team and a, a website's been out there, yep. back to the scene for probably best part of 10 years now, I would say. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they could both want to win it. Um, unfortunately, one of them makes their end. Footways went 2-0 down against Ajax. I was probably looking through my fingers watching the rest of that game because it could have been drastic. They answered really quickly. They got a, a goal back, 2-1, and they didn't allow Ajax to settle. What they can do here is let Atlantide settle in this game. Let's go, here we go ladies and gentlemen, bet the two. That's Lantai playing in the black from left to right of course, and foot miss in the white. Nanga coming out from either team just yet though, proper some world counter-attack, good overhead through ball. This is what's been working well for Atalantai way, but it's a weak attempt in the end from Henri. Petacek as well, he's been in and around. Zaha though, in that pool of players available! And a straight and forward as you get in 2v2. I've got serious question marks over the keeper. I think you could tell Footway is just sort of all smiling, Devon in the back shaking his head. They've got the speed, they've got the pace, as Mbappe wiggles his way through, a tapping required, but unfortunately nobody on the end of it. Talking about whether you need to be talking to your teammates, that's where Frustrations may flare up, but oh, straight down the other end. Big Kylian Mbappe. Ruben Diaz. No doubt. That's Get it out. Off for half time. So just training by the one goal. You see Ethan having that conversation. Nick Step listening in. Denman there as well. I wouldn't be surprised if changes have been have quickly been made there while we saw that replay. Just the openness of the conversation, the way that he sort of turned around, OK, yeah. what's happening? And then you, you get back into the game. Players focused. That's the through ball, that's a deadly through ball. Keeper comes out, does his job, does his job. Good work, whoever brought the keeper out there, because that was risky. And I've got to be honest, when he committed early, I was expecting the chip. So, let's see, Footwiz on the attack. Starts to put a lot more pressure in this second half than we saw in the first. Dembele working it well. Good work here from Fuma and Stingray. Though, doing that defensive work, once again clearing the lines, and they just look so quick in the counter. Look at that ball, is oh, he? He's in, he could just play it on, but he's dead. Got a little greedy there, maybe should have just played that on a little bit more. Playing for the last attack. It's going to the left wing, Dembele under pressure, but he's actually come out on top, might be able to make the use of it, gets ahead of his man, but he's just running too far, that's going to be a corner, last minute corner, let's see what they can do with it, they tried to work something on the near post before, and as you said, he was going for the back man, look at Virgil van Dijk here, in and around the penalty spot perhaps, that's maybe what they're looking for, it is, he's going to try and challenge the keeper, too far into Bortois, and they will be 1-0 to Atalantide Wave, it's the through balls which are going through which is getting us just a little bit where they're just he's running down the side of Von Rien like he's tracking it and he's just fucking tipping it over anyway like it's getting brain dead too far I'm not sure we just have to 
be conscious because it's going to slip away very quick, but we can also get back into it very quickly. They've not been out of the game. One nil is one attack, you score from kickoff, you're right back in it. Yeah. They've kept it competitive going into the second leg. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, bit of a bit of a change of colour. Foot is now playing in the black. That's an anti wave in the orange. Good chance straight away. That's an anti wave that gets the early goal. And that is exactly what Footwiz did not want. But now the pressure's on. Now they have to go for it. They have to chase it. 2-0 down. Cut out, those two defensive midfielders working well. Pele chance, blocked down. Chance here for Dembele, sights. It's a few too many times. Milinkovic Savic finds De Bruyne, finds the space. Footwiz trailing by two goals here with just 45 to go. Oh, let's go. Hey, focus on it. Let's go for five minutes. Don't fucking lose your heads yet, man. There's a lot of time to go. Fucking hell. Let's do it down now. They're the ones who've got it all to lose, right? Come on. Footways have got to get going here. They've got to see something soon. Maybe break that deadlock, get that confidence, get a shot off, if anything. We haven't really seen a shot. There's a big chance. But they, oh, just absolutely muddled off the ball. Into Frankie de Jong, finds Messi in the box, tries to wriggle it. Chance, goal! Here we go! Footwiz break the deadlock at last. Two on the score. Ten minutes now to keep their tournament lives. Open the game is right now. Vinicius Junior now, fresh legs down that right wing, looking to work it through. De Jong and the passes, the pass completion is all on at the moment. Mbappe turns, oh, Mbappe turns into oh, goal! They have done it! They have come back from two down once again! And Footwiz are right back into it with just a few moments to go in this game. We must have two minutes left. You lose, you fucking lose, all right? You've got to match them up because you're better than them. Simple as that. So here we go, extra time, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't think we were going to see it, but from two down, Footwiz rise like the Phoenix. Can they go the distance here? Coming straight back into it. That's a great through ball. The keeper came too far, maybe. Pogba off his Side, chance by to Mbappe's face. Yesterday we had everything. Really, we really did. We had insane penalty shootouts, last-minute goals, late drama. It, it had the lot. It was an absolute magnificent day. It's going to have to be a big one to top what we had yesterday in terms of drama. But honestly, we've got four teams. I think anyone can take it today. If you're a fan of drama, then this is the game that you want to highlight. Anything that Foo has been a part of this far in the last few days. They don't win easily, do they? We've seen extra no. time, we've seen penalty kicks. That might have been the most stressful. It's the longest penalty kick dispute we've ever seen. They had four opportunities to win it. They took them five. They didn't convert any of the previous ones. So expect drama, expect sweat, expect reactions. I hope Denman has on the glasses their coach.
I don't think he wanted to be on camera in case they went down early. No regrets, all right? Play with no regrets. If something comes in your mind, you want to do something, say it, all right? Keep communicating, keep everything spot on and you'll win, all right? But credit to Footwiz, Nick Snab, a player that came for their academy roster back in 2020. Yeah, when I got to experience that firsthand when Nick Snab joined my pro club team many, many years ago, and you could just see the talent that he had on the board. He wanted to get that ball, he wanted to drive, get into the box, show the skill moves that he's capable of delivering. And obviously, with Ethan alongside him, it is just a perfect duo. Semi-final time here. And the FIFA E Club World Cup. Winner of this game will double the cash they've already earned. $150,000 and an outing in this year's grand final in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The competition, you always tend to look at um, earlier achievements and performances. Oh my, oh my, what is going on? That's a start! What a great start. so we can just essentially see it out to half time. They didn't take any risk. If they could have got an attack in there, brilliant. They obviously would have been very grateful for that. But I think we spoke about the age and the first time being here. That shows their maturity to say, let's get these wing backs back and let's make sure we don't concede on the stroke half time. And this is only leg one of two here. Knockout play every game decided over two legs. Traditional FIFA Esports former. All inclusive. And that type of ordeal. Counts here for Footways. Is he outside? He oh, is. That's not the right judgment. They had him. At least another dribble there. Fantastic goalkeeper movement's got to be said. There was a big chance, maybe with a ball roll there, just to get into the right angle to go for Trivella. But they're knocking on the door now, Footways. Bella. Good feet from Nick Snap. Nick Snap with Pele. Ball roll. You're assessing the situation, then you're reacting, and it's working perfectly. Because they, they want to bite, but they don't want it, so they just sit there and stare at you. So it gives you time to see the situation in front of you. Perfect, they're scared to my pressure. Only one of these teams will make it through to this year's E Club World Cup Grand Final. We join it now. Two, one is the scoreline. Team Footwiz this time kicking in their traditional black and green strip. Napoli Esports, early start that we're looking for, Mbappe, two defenders there, had to just double up, Ethan and Nick's them just threw anybody in the way there, and it just did enough, Alex. To make something happen, Zidane pushed out to this left-hand side, Socrates, and him with interchange the two icons, this is nice, in such a tight area, there's Pogba! A lovely little shimmy away, did time it green, but just not to be. Nick's them, dancing in the box. Man, there's Fernandez. You saw the idea there, just to drop the shoulder on Socrates. It's half time we go. 45 minutes away, our team footwiz from a ground fight. 
to potentially Still cause some time, drama. Though. A lot of time to work with. I mean, if anyone, if any team. Oh no, what's a save? It was nearly a complete team shot from Virgil van Dijk. Team Footways. Nine minutes away from a grand final. But they're going to have to defend this constant wave of Italian pressure from Napoli. Napoli come again on the heart. There's Mbappé! And there's the equaliser! Back in the tie. They never said no. More drama at the E Club World Cup. Well, extra time is needed. 30 more. Minutes. Forget about what's happened. We can't change that. We can't control that. So it's happened now. Let's fucking focus on and figure out how we're going to beat these fuckers. And we're going to extra time somewhere where Footwee's almost coming to their own in extra time. Well, one thing you may have just seen on your screen. There's been a handful of changes. Here's one now. Pop up with the team. Footwee's. Oh, what a save from Courtois. The shot was in time, but regardless, it was a ridiculous save from the Belgian shot stopper. 15 minutes, people. Are we off for more penalty drama here with the Eclop World Cup? Or is there going to be a hero? Which of these two players for the team is going to step up to be accounted for? Here's Ethan in control of Omri now. Is there an option in the box? Scoop turn back inside. This is nice, great save from Courtois. Are we off to a $150,000 penalty shootout? I think we might be. Last mistake. Full wins. With the last chance of the game. A chance to win it now or not. Penalty shootout. We're off to it right now. E Club World Cup. Grand final will be the sun here. Footwiz are back again at the dreaded penalties. Footwiz score the first one. Manuel Neuer now steps up for Napoli. He does score as well. T here. Martinez. What can he do? Picks the right way here. Gets the goal for Footwiz. Napoli to bounce back now with Benzema. Save Van der Sar. Oh no, not you Pogba. The worst run up in the game for Footwiz. Is it three from three? It's Nick step over it and Pogba. Which way will he go? Saved. Napoli. With a chance to put it right. Up steps Omri. Which way will he go? Down the middle and scores. Can we all square here? Mbappe tries for it to Penenka, but save. Penenka not coming through there. Time for Napoli to try and take the lead in this penalty shootout. Saved again. And we're all square into penalty number five. Thierry Henry for Thornley's down the middle. Have to score, Napoli. Have to score to stay in the tournament. Up steps on it. Which way will he go? We're in the final, the biggest, the biggest game, the game for the trophy, the game for 300,000 pounds. We're playing against Leipzig, who, if you were to ask us about World Tournament, we probably said they're the favourites to win it. So it's going to be the hardest game in the final for a reason. RB Leipzig, Team Footwiz. I mean, this is the moment that both of these sides have been fighting tooth and nail to get to. Footwiz, who have scratched and clawed every single game. They weren't supposed to be in this grand final, but they are. RB Leipzig, before we'd even kicked off, were the favourite to win this tournament. They are here on the main stage. RB Leipzig, Team Footwiz. I mean, this is the moment that both of these sides have been fighting tooth and nail to get to. They've gone about it very different ways. Well, here we go. Ethan and Nick Snev, Team Footwiz Europe. From left to right, black and green strip. And from right to left, all in white. The Wonder Kid, Anders Vergang, the world champion. 
Umut. This is going to be a remarkable two legs of FIFA. Struck yourself in. That's here for Footways. Is he outside? He oh, is. That's not the right judgment. He had him. At least another dribble there. Fantastic goalkeeper movement. It's got to be said. RB Leipzig looking to build. Here is R9, the magic man. And he fires RB Leipzig into the lead. And you've got 1 0 for Leipzig. And that hurts you a little bit. If you're a Footways fan, they've had a couple big chances and they weren't able to convert. You've got to be clinical at this level. Here is Pele, Mbappe, step over, slots it in the bottom corner, and we've got a game on our hands. Final chance of the half, the pitch has just opened up. That is, they're asking questions, team footways, they're going, what just went wrong, what happened? That's what we talk about, maybe the nerves. 45th minute, the pressure is on. Half time, two-legged affair. Handling those in the big game is pretty easy now, I feel. I feel like when you get to some situations over and over again, you've just got to trust yourself. Trust the fact that you put in and trust that you know what's best for that situation. Two European giants here, Team Footways. Their crowning moment potentially happening in 30 minutes time. Or will it be Arguably the, the team that was put together for this exact reason, put together to win. And they're letting Footways have the ball out wide. But again, you're not scoring goals there. And they're not a team that really whips in a bunch of crosses. They've had some moments, but I wouldn't say it's part of their bread and butter. We do have a two-legged -like game in this grand final. We've got another 90 minutes left to play. This could be a chance here for Team Footways. That's Nick Stebber in possession. Getting to the byline, he's dangerous. He gets the ball taken off him. He's on the byline, I don't have a clue what's just happened, and the referee takes his into the Again, you don't even see that very often. That was the half drag back. Anderson Umut 2 1 up, but it's so open this game still. I mean, Footways can score a goal in the first two minutes, and it's. One goal is nothing in FIFA. But we can't wait for the second leg. Who will be crowned this year's FIFA E Club World Cup winner for now? It's back to Richard and Mike. Here we go, back underway in the second leg of action. Your final 90 minutes of the FIFA E Club World Cup 2023. Richard Buckley and Mike LaBelle bringing you the crowning moment here, live from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Potentially a chance starting to emerge here from Team Fulwiz. I'd, I'd like to see them just be a little bit more quick in their attacks. Coming out from either team just yet, though. Proper some more counter attack. Good over head through ball. This is what's been working well for that type way, but it's a weak. R9 into Rashford. Double step over. 3 1. RB Leipzig. like for Team Footways to salvage their Club World Cup. Ethan has been at this exact point before in his career. 2020, they lost a penalty shootout himself and Resende for Team 11th. I mean, if anyone, if any team, any club's going to do it, it is Team Footways. They have been must-watch television. Army Leipzig more than happy to see this clock tick down. Chance here for Team Footways, driven pass into the box. This could be that advantage, Paul Pogba off the bench, oh. three times off the post, oh. the rebound. Straight into the hands of Edwin van der Sar. Wow. Every single loose pass is going Team Footways' this way, as Pele sticks it wide on the post. Footways have got their own story left to tell. Two, three minutes remaining. Team Footwits, 3 2 down. Anders Vergang, Umit. You are world champions once again. RB Leipzig on top of the club mountain here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia.
it's a bit of a heartbreaking situation because I personally feel that how Jacob feels like deep down I do believe Bruce is a better team but end of the day we don't take a chance in FIFA you are going to lose Leipzig with Anders over when they step over you and score every time that's just one of them we missed our chances and they took theirs so congrats to them Overall the tournament was definitely the best tournament I've ever played at um, my first tournament away from London but we had fans for the first time which were unbelievable um, the, the venue was incredible, the good experience out in Saudi Arabia and also just the fashion we did the tournament in, like um, the ups and downs through the groups, then to the, to the knockouts where we went on penalties on the 20th minute. It was an um, incredible scene to us. Last year we were a bit of disappointment when we came into this year with a lot of belief in what we had from the last year and we put it right, we going through Club World Cup unbeaten until the actual Club World Cup groups and then obviously coming second to Leipzig who, as I say, were probably the favourites of the whole winner. So we've definitely put our names out there and we are definitely one of the best two or two teams.